Hi, and thank you so much for joining today. Today, I am gonna talk about some of the science-backed and evidence-based tips to do with losing weight. Recently, if you haven't caught any of my updates, I make updates on Sunday about the pandemic because I'm an epidemiologist and a public health specialist. You might have seen me talk in those updates about how one of the biggest risk factors for both hospitalization and for mortality, so dying from coronavirus, is actually um, being overweight or obese. And that is obviously just one of the factors. There are other things like old age and comorbidities, things like lung problems and kidney problems, as well as a slight um, difference in male to female ratios. So men are at higher risk very slightly as well. Here in the UK, there has been a huge push recently by the UK government to help us to lose weight, to get fit and to get healthy. And the government is suggesting that this is really important because they are anticipating a second spike or at least the flu season coinciding with a coronavirus pandemic and the additional challenges that come with the winter months like things like slips, trips, falls, um, fuel poverty, all of these things that I've discussed in previous videos, but they can basically cause this culmination effect of lots of people needing to access healthcare all at the same time. And obviously the biggest thing that we're trying to avoid is to overrun the healthcare services because um, healthcare services that are over capacity is one of the biggest risk factors for mortality as well. So in that context, the government is actually doing a lot of work to try and help the nation to get healthy. And here in the UK, over 60% of the UK population is either overweight or obese. And they categorise the person's weight using the body mass index charts. And if you have a healthy weight range, is somewhere between about um, 18 and a half to 25 or just under 25. Anything above 25 to 29.5 is seen as overweight and anything 30 plus is seen as obese. So the first tip is actually something really simple and it is to get a diary and to use a food journal. So scientifically this is said to help to um, promote weight loss for a number of reasons. The first is because sometimes we can eat and not realise how much we are eating. So maybe you snack through the day or you might finish children's leftovers or you might eat something that you're not sure how many calories it has in, you're not really considering sort of what you're eating and you might forget some things that you've eaten. You might not realise that certain drinks are incredibly high in calories and energy and hidden sugars and you might find that you have a lot more in terms of hidden sugars, hidden fats and hidden calories than you realise. So by writing it all down and being really clear, it helps you to realise what you're eating, realise how many calories you're consuming and also the other reason why food journaling is scientifically really helpful to lose weight is because it also helps you to identify patterns. So if you've got a journal and you say you write down um, 9 p.m. at cookies or 9 p.m. cookies or uh, something like that, you know, so you can write your patterns down, it will help you to look at that over a period of weeks or days, months, whatever, to see, okay, well, I tend to eat sugary products at this time of day and then that can help you to figure out well why am I eating them at this time of day rather than other times of the day is it because I'm tired is it because I'm stressed is it because I'm not sleeping enough you know so it helps you to identify patterns in your eating and then when you've done that you can replace those habits with something healthier keeping a food diary helps you to be accountable it helps you to identify patterns it helps you to be consciously aware of what you're eating and it helps you to record foods so that you can be aware of exactly how many calories you're having, where they're coming from and gives you some, basically gives you the raw data to go on and analyse what you're eating and what you're doing so that you can make um, plans and strategies. And the last concept under the theme of journaling and writing things down is meal planning. So meal prep has been shown to be really, really helpful. So in lots of um, cohort studies, systematic reviews, and also uh, case review studies, 
there has been a lot of uh, participants who've said actually I don't have time to eat healthily, I'm really tired, I haven't thought about food until I'm really hungry so I just eat what's available and there's lots of reasons why you might want to eat immediately and if you plan in advance and meal prep in advance then it helps to take away that um, immediate stress and that I don't know what to eat but I'm hungry so I'm just going to eat something really quick and it helps you to choose more healthy nourishing foods that are higher in vitamins, minerals and all of the macronutrients that your body needs to be full and to um, help you obtain optimal health. So planning ahead, meal prepping, it doesn't have to be onerous, you could just write down a few quick main meals for the week, so maybe seven main meals and when you do your food shop, buy the ingredients that you need for those meals so that you know through the week that you've got at least seven healthy nutrient dense meals that you can have at least once a day. So even if the others aren't great, then you know that you're going to get at least one um, nutrient dense meal a day. So food prepping, meal planning, writing it down, planning ahead, that's another really good tip to ensure the success of your healthy weight journey. The next tip is everywhere in the academic literature. There are so many papers that talk about things like hidden sugars, refined sugars, poor quality carbohydrates, high sugar foods, high sugar drinks. So the best tip to pull all of that evidence together really is to think about ways that you can cut down, swap or substitute high sugar products for something more wholesome. So for example, in my thesis, one of the things that I looked at was energy drinks and the amount of sugar that you will see in energy drinks is um, is unbelievable. So your average sort of 500 ml energy drink can contain anywhere between 50 and 70 grams of sugar. And the average person really is recommended your upper maximum limit should only be between 25 and 30 grams of sugar per day. And that's everything. That's including stuff like um, ketchup, condiments, um, any actual foods that you're you're consuming. So if you drink two days worth of your sugar recommended daily allowance just in one beverage, then as a day that is going to really um, increase the amount of sugars, calories and hidden sugars that you're consuming on a daily basis. So have a look at where your hidden sugars are in your day. So if you do the food journaling tip, maybe you'll see that actually I do have an energy drink about three o'clock in the afternoon. It is full sugar. There's 60 grams of sugar. I could even just swap that for a sugar-free energy drink. Um, not that I'm particularly advocating energy drink because they're a whole topic on their own, but um, as a whole, you know, just to illustrate that uh, sugary drinks are a really easy way that you accidentally or maybe unwittingly consume a huge amount of calories and sugars without really realising it. Um, and obviously, if if you do, then that's a quick way, a quick win to swap those out for something more wholesome or nutrient dense. So hidden sugars, have a look at them. You'll be surprised where you find them. Little changes that you can make in order to help you to reduce those hidden sugars. When you're considering your meal, try to think of your macronutrients and how much protein, fiber, carbohydrates you actually need. And you can use something like the food guide, like the food pyramid guide, or you could look at your own uh, macronutrient level requirement if you are tracking macros or you could just go for a relatively balanced meal of vegetables, carbohydrates and proteins. The last two tips are lifestyle tips that don't necessarily have a lot to do with what you're eating but actually have a huge impact on your health and well-being and your behaviour. And then by addressing your behavior, that can actually impact on what you do in terms of your eating. So sleep and stress are two key areas that if we have too much stress or not enough sleep, both of those things can affect our behavior. They can affect our mental resolve, our psychology. 
and I won't go into a huge amount of detail here in this video but I will in future videos. Stress and sleep both have a really big impact on the brain. If you want more detail on the brain relationship check out my playlist on brain health. I've talked in great detail about the molecular mechanisms to do with sugar and the brain, um, sleep in the brain, things like that. So if you do like that kind of thing check out that playlist. I'll link it below. But sleep and stress are some of the biggest things that cause us to overeat, cause us to have much less resolve, cause us to not plan ahead, not think as clearly as we want to and they generally kind of block us from making healthy choices because we're just too tired and irritated to actually make healthy choices because we've got either too much in our mind because we're stressed, we haven't slept enough and it makes us stressed. So prioritizing sleep, making sure you get a good amount of sleep can help you to be focused, more clear, more motivated and trying to lower your stress levels in whatever ways work for you because then you are more focused and you are more likely to make more healthy choices if you are less stressed. So these are just some of the evidence-based tips that um, jump out of the literature and that I've used through my academic research and in my practice. So I thought these might be useful and helpful to you. Um, I am going to follow this video up with a healthy food haul so that you can get some ideas of meals to make and some things that you might want to pop on your shopping list. We're going to look at some of the hidden sugars in foods that you might not expect to see in your kitchen and I'm going to post some vlogs about my own personal weight loss journey as well because I am taking the advice seriously and I definitely have some work to do around living a more healthy life and achieving a more of a healthy BMI. So I'm going to be sharing my journey. So if you do want to embark on this healthy journey with me, then do subscribe to this channel and keep an eye out for my vlogs, updates and um, information around a living a healthy lifestyle. So thank you so much if you caught this. I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next one.